hey the mass chaos is all over the world right now the world is just going mad and what I'm talking about is a lot of different things that we're gonna talk about on this video today from what's going on in Africa NATO ups its arms and stuff supplies to Ukraine um, you got the French they're, they're just hurting like crazy the unions are still on strike there with the gas and now somebody is threatening to strike to protest because they haven't come to a settlement yet and what else is taking place I mean what's going on in China you know the Chinese government there has the China president uh, his iron fist is that gonna be a very bad decision on his part of what he's doing to that country what is taking place there so hey welcome back to survival preparedness for beginners as i have been stating you all need to be prepping you need to be making sure that you are doing everything you can be doing at this point in time because the world has gone mad all right folks and we just don't know what is going to happen from day to day anything else so i'm just telling you what is going on you all can do with it what you wish um, this way here i am trying to keep my community informed all right we're going to start off in africa they are right. seeing these most challenging environmental things that are taking place over there massive droughts and everything else famine is out of control because they're not getting the food and stuff that they usually rely on from ukraine so now thousands of women and children and men are all going hungry they're begging for food and everything else their drought is one of the worst droughts in over a hundred years um, they can't even plant their what they could plant because nothing's growing whatever they plant just dies because they have no water wells are running dry they have no running water no clean water to drink it's a very bad situation in Africa and until something changes especially with Ukraine if we can't start getting some of the grains and stuff to these third world countries I think you're gonna start seeing a lot of people perish because of these type of situations now you got NATO they're upping all the arms and supplies and everything else to Ukraine right now because you know they want to try to keep everything in check so what they are basically doing is is everybody is trying to pitch in and help and send more stuff and everything else but then in the same token Ukraine is begging the United States for billions of dollars and more military aid and everything else you know they want more missiles they want more guns and ammo and you name it they want it you know and they're gonna keep getting it because they have to keep doing this they have to try to keep everything under control because you know if we put boots on the ground over there then it's World War three which I think we're heading towards as of right now where do we really stand in Ukraine we keep giving them all this money and you know I mean where, where are they spending all this money and stuff on if they're receiving all the different uh, guns and ammo and you know all the logistics and everything else from United States and all the European countries that are helping out over there right now I mean I understand it takes money but what do they need money for on top of more of the ammunition and all these other type of military items Give them the military items, you hold the cash back. They're trying to um, push Russia back as far as they can push them. They're trying to push them right out of Ukraine and reclaim all these different parts that the uh, Russian army did move in on. And then Russia claimed that it was theirs now. You know, I mean, <laughs> we're just taking this little chunk out of your land. How far are they really going to push Putin back? And is a lot of this all just kind of a staged thing i mean doesn't anybody else think it's quite funny that all of a sudden boom you know um, these guys roll into these towns that russia occupied and now there's nobody there there's no russians there's no nothing you know uh, why did they leave makes one wonder at least if i was in the military i'd be wondering okay why did all these guys go you know and where are they going that's what I'd be asking at this point in time. I think they're planning something else. I think they're planning a bigger offense. And we'll see what happens um, here shortly, I guess. You know, they've already been using bigger bombs and striking more civilian areas uh, along with a lot of the strategic parts of the country. Uh, trying going after the electric grid um, 
and all that. So we don't know exactly where all this is going to be going. We do have the two French unions that did come out and supposedly quoted, you know, agreed to whatever their union contract that has been put up to them uh, was. But there is a large group over there. I think it's a CGT group. Um, and they're the main ones that run the refineries and stuff. And they don't agree with this thing at all. And what is going to take place there is, and it's going to put a lot of people in France in the dark, a lot of the power grid companies and employees at these major power grid companies that they have there, they're gonna strike in protests of the gas companies because they're not getting a fair contract. So basically they're trying to shut them down completely. So you're gonna shut down the gas and electricity in France until these guys get whatever their contract is that they wanted. Pretty outstanding, huh? And then let's move on over real quick and we'll go down. We're going to talk about China real quick and what's going on with President Xi there. And, you know, he's had this huge iron fist with this whole uh, Charlie Victor 19 thing over there. And now they're starting these lockdowns and stuff again. They've been trying to control people and when they can go to work and when they can move around, if they can shop, when they can leave their homes, the whole nine yards. And people are rebelling big time. I'm sure maybe some of you have seen this on your news and everything else. I mean, they're they're just rebelling big time. And I'm wondering really if this is going to backfire in their face. But then again, we, we also have to wonder, you know, you are talking a communist country. So anybody that is protesting or anything like this nature, we do not know what would happen to them if all of a sudden the government did roll into these groups and to control and all of a sudden these people just disappeared off the face of the earth. There's nobody there to protect them. The world has gone mad, folks. It is so very vital that everybody stays informed, even if you don't want to, so that you can make good quality decisions and know how you need to be planning. You need to be planning to make sure you have your food, your water, your medical supplies, first aid kits, and that type of nature. I talked about maybe having certain types of items also just on the chance of some catastrophic event does take place. Let's pray to God that it doesn't go that far. But, you know, having some sheets of plastic with some duct tape, uh, stuff that you can maybe seal off your doors with, even if it's spray foam, whatever, you know, at that point in time, you're going to have to do whatever you have to do because there's no way you're going outside. Maybe if you have to, you have special masks, uh, special gear, special things of this nature here. Maybe you can survive the catastrophic event if that does happen. Um, these are just things that you really need to be paying attention to because for uh, once again, you know, our government isn't telling us to prepare for nothing except for, you know what, you just don't have any money anymore because, you know, we're going broke. The dollar is going down the tube. And on top of that, inflation so high, you can't even afford to buy a dozen eggs at the grocery store that I went to this morning that was $5.67 for a dozen eggs. Give me a break, folks. So you need to be doing everything you can. Maybe you need to be trying to buy some seed, learn how to grow some stuff inside in the winter time. If you have a controlled temperature and everything else and you know, buy a fluorescent bulb or something where you can get some natural light on them and try to grow some uh, vegetables or something in your home during the winter time to give you some fresh vegetables or something that could help you survive the winter. It's going to be a brutal winter. We all need to be paying attention to what is going on. So I'm Survival Preparedness for Beginners. Thank you for joining me on this video today. I want everybody to be informed. I want everybody to be prepared and I want everybody out here to stay safe. And that's why as far as me bringing the news to you, to my community, that is the most important thing to me. So until next time, I'll catch all of you on the flip side.